Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. So in the previous videos, we went over how to create enemies and detect collision between Mega Man and the enemies. So just to show you what we have so far, you can see we have three enemies and if Mega Man touches one of them, then we get a collision. So I'm just going to move Mega Man over here and you can see we get a lot of collisions and I can jump over and now Mega Man is touching two of them at the same time. So we have collision detection working. Now the issue is when Mega Man touches an enemy, we are detecting a lot of collisions because each frame we are detecting one collision. And since we are doing 60 frames per second, there are going to be 60 collisions per second. Now, if Mega Man had a health bar and we deduct one point off Mega Man's health every time there's a collision, well, within one second, Mega Man would lose all of his health. So in video games, there's two ways to address this. One way is called a knockback. Basically, you are moving Mega Man out of the enemy's range. So in some video games, if I touch an enemy, I would move back like that. I would be pushed backwards. So that is called a knockback. However, that is a little bit complicated because you need to make sure that if you do get knocked back, there's no wall behind you because you need to make sure that you're able to move backwards without colliding into a wall. So that's one way to resolve this issue. Another way is to just make Mega Man temporarily invincible, meaning that when Mega Man touches the enemy, it counts as one collision and then we make Mega Man invincible. So for one second, Mega Man will not be able to take damage when touching the enemy and this will give him enough time to get out of the enemy's range. And in some cases, the games use a combination of both, so you would be invincible and you would be pushed backwards. And the knockback effect makes it feel like your player is actually taking damage, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to make the player invincible. So to make the player invincible, I'm going to add a field over here, and by default, this will be false. And over here, I'm going to add another method called set invincible. And here I'm going to pass in a parameter and this parameter is going to be optional. So we'll have milliseconds and by default, I'm going to make it 1000 milliseconds. So essentially this will be how long you want to make Mega Man invincible. Now in many video games, you have various ways to be invincible. One way is to get touched by an enemy. Or another way is if you pick up an item and the item makes you invincible for let's say 10 seconds. So for that reason, I have this optional parameter. For now, I'm just going to set Mega Man Invincible. So with this method, we'll do self.invincible and I'll just set this to true. Now we're going to go to where we collide with the enemies. So in our move function over here, I'm going to make a check. If not player.invincible and player.collidewreck metal. So only if the player is not invincible should we check for a collision. And in this case, if the player is not already invincible, then we process a collision. And then here I'm going to call player.set invincible. So let's see what we have so far. So I'm going to save and run a program and we have an enemy in front of us. Now Mega Man is going to go towards the enemy. You can see it counts as one collision. And you can see there's no more collisions. And that is because when we set invincible, we set the field invincible to true, but we never change it back to false. So when we set Mega Man invincible, we want to make sure that we set invincible back to false so Mega Man can take damage again. So I'm going to scroll back up and let's create a timer. And for the timer, I'm going to add a custom event and I'm going to call this event invincible end. And this will be pygame.userEvent. And here I'm just going to add a plus zero. So you can have up to nine user events. So it'll be user event plus zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, and so on until you have nine events. Now this plus zero doesn't really change anything to this enum. All it does is just signifies that this is one event that we're going to be listening for. So here this is invincible end. Now we need to call this event. So if you remember, an event is basically a click or a key press. In this case, this is a custom event that does not rely on any keyboard or mouse clicks. So we need to somehow trigger this event. And to trigger this event, we will use a timer. So here I'm going to scroll down and within our set invincible function, I'm going to do pygame.time.setTimer and we're going to trigger invincible end. 
So we're going to trigger this event and we need to pass in two more parameters, which is the delay. So in this case, I'll make the delay milliseconds. So we trigger this event within one second and then the number of times we want to repeat this event, which is going to be one. So once we call this event, we need to check for it. So in our game loop, we have a for loop that checks for all events. So here you can see we have a pie game quit event. We can also add another event. So if event dot type is equal to invincible end, then we're going to do player dot invincible and set it back to false. So basically, whenever we set invincible to true, we're going to call an event one second later, which is invincible end, which would then flip player invincible back to false. All right, let's save and run the program. Okay, so now if Mega Man charges at the enemy, you can see we take one damage and after a second, Mega Man is no longer invincible. So let's charge at the enemy again. And you can see every second that we are touching the enemy, we only take one damage. And this will also be the case if we touch two enemies. Only one damage will be counted for per second. Alright, so that's how you can implement invincibility in Pygame. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create a health bar to display the health of Mega Man and deduct health from Mega Man every time Mega Man takes damage. So that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more Python game programming tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.